What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Civil Man's Comics, and we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. This is a great one. This is the 10th one, so this is going to be a total of 100 picks that we've given you. So not only is this a top 10, it makes up the master list so far of 100 great back issues to be on the lookout for. And we keep telling you how this list builds on itself. So now we're putting our money where our mouth is, and we created an ebook with over 100 back issues to collect. It's available right now up on simplemanscomics.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage. It's under $2. For under $2, we're giving you a master list of all these picks plus some bonus picks, but that's not all, right, Jack? No, that's not all. This book is amazing. We're really proud of it. Not only are you going to get great graphic images of all the books on the list, including some of the variants to be on the lookout for for some of the given books. You're going to get little write-ups giving you kind of the history of each book, but you're going to get that secret sauce. You're going to get that opinion from Brian and I about why we chose books for this list. You're going to get write-ups on specific trends that impacted the selection of this list, as well as kind of some advice from none other than Brian Wood himself. And you're going to get all of this contained within this book for, like Brian said, under two dollars available for download right now on simplemanscomics.com and this is something that we knew we were doing throughout this entire process because again we like to innovate we wanted to do something different and we wanted to be able to take these lists and not just be disposable one-off one week youtube videos but really give you guys the simplemans comics family a resource tool that can be at your disposal whenever you need it and remember, guys, this is just volume one. We're going to keep this going and keep doing this. And we hope that you will add these great Simpleman's Comics books to your collection. Yeah, so like I said, simplemanscomics.com. It's right there on the homepage, so make sure you guys go and check it out. But we're getting into the list right now, starting with number 10. Kicking off the list this week, we get Star Wars Tales number seven. This is another book that we've talked about in other videos on here, but it deserves a spot on this list. A lot of this is talking about that first appearance of Boba Fett's daughter. I'm not of that mindset, yes, but everyone knows I don't like holograms and I don't like babies, but what say you on this, Jack? Yeah, this may not be one you or I like as far as the book that we would pick to chase for this character, but it kind of doesn't matter. It's the book that the market is chasing. And all of the, the, the various books for Boba Fett's daughter, they're definitely in demand, but this is the one that was kind of tabbed early. The funny thing about this book is it's always kind of been in demand. That cover B variant, that photo variant featuring Boba Fett is one that has always been collected by variant collectors. Uh, it's, it's kind of was popular ever before people were chasing any of these Dark Horse first appearances. But with the Mandalorian and Boba Fett coming along within that story and all of the, that talk, a lot of people are starting to speculate who else is going to be coming down the line. It's kind of a fair speculation and prices have already started to take off, but we really don't know, Brian, what the cap is for a lot of these Star Wars books. I mean, you know, you look at this book and it's a $40 book. So usually we don't really advocate modern books for, for that kind of a price. We're trying to give you guys attainable, affordable books. But at the same point, when you start looking at what some of the other Dark Horse books have gotten up into the stratospheres, over 100 uh, into the multi-hundreds, $40 may just be the beginning of this journey. Yeah, I agree. And besides, I give more respect to a hologram or a baby than I would. We're seeing prices of preview books go astronomical. And that's just, I can't even put my hands around that. So there's no doubt I can see why this one's up there. Yeah, that's a video all to itself. Then heading the list at the number nine spot, Transformers number one, volume one. We're not talking about IDW here. We're talking about Marvel. We've talked about this on another list, also with those comic books based on those toy brands. But here we have it in our back issue, and for good reason. That Bill Sienkiewicz cover alone is why I like it, but it's a permanent fixture in pop culture as well, right? Right. This one fits into multiple trends that we highlighted within this brand new ebook that we just dropped on Simpleman's Comics for under $2. You're talking about 80s and 90s nostalgia. You're talking about classic is classic because this is the first appearance of the Transformers. And I think that the Transformers are really multi-generational at this point. And it doesn't really seem like there's really ever going to be a time where Transformers isn't important kind of within the lexicon of pop culture. 
And we've already seen a slate of movies, yes, but we're rebooting. And I think that you can't base what you've seen before on anything you're going to see in the future because everything has kind of evolved and developed. And I think that this property too will evolve and develop. And also, I'm excited about the tie-in with Transformers and Power Rangers and G.I. Joe. I think that that's going to give them an opportunity to a very, very unique cinematic universe that can maybe not rival Marvel, um, maybe DC, but either way can be a great alternative option for a lot of people. So I think no matter what, books like this are absolute blue chips in the making, and they're great at the price that they are right now on the market. Hitting us next on the list, we get Bone Parish number one from Boom Studios. There's another book we've talked about previously on this channel, but great spot on here. Kind of keep hearing rumors, right? We keep hearing rumors whether it's adapted, it's not adapted, but to put that to the side, no doubt, great book. If you're not reading this in floppies, pick up the trade, but definitely pick up that number one issue. Colin Bunn, we always talk about how great he is at these stories, right? Right. So this is a book that has been immediately uh, – been kind of like skyrocketing since the Netflix boom first look deal. But we have kind of a history with this book uh, and maybe some accidental spoilers because we had Arun Singh, the VP of marketing for Boom Studios on the channel all way back when, uh, back when we were really introducing him to a lot of people within the comic community. And now, of course, everybody knows Arun. He's a superstar. But, you know, it's one of those things where uh, ever since then, and he's talked about, uh, you know, Bone Parish and kind of his hype that there could be something coming along the pike. And then we didn't really hear anything. But when I was at Heroes Con in Charlotte, Colin Bunn himself kind of grabbed me when I was sitting there with uh, Andy Tomberlin of the Indie Spotlight series and was like, how did you hear about that? So I knew right then where there's smoke, there's fire. So we haven't heard anything yet. The rumor back then was Netflix. I still think that's obviously where this is going to end up. But either way, we've talked about the popularity of Netflix the way that this book could really play on Netflix. And I think that for the long term, this is one to pay attention to. There's not a ton of indie books on this list, but the books that we do have on this list are books that we really focused on hitting that trend of Netflix being in literally everybody's home and that Tiger King bird box effect could take over with any of these properties. We often talk about how our top 10 lists have themes to it, and we're starting to see the theme in this week's list. We're talking about Power Rangers number one. We're not talking about Boom. We're talking about the Hamilton one, right? Right, a book that kind of uh, has been overlooked for a long time. Not an easy book to find in good condition. Uh, it's, it's a book that at one time was considered extremely plentiful and nobody really wanted it. And now, as it's kind of become an in-demand back issue, Suddenly, it's, it's a little bit of a tougher find, especially in that high-grade condition. But yes, there is a Power Ranger book, comic book that came out before it. It's one of those books that's kind of been deemed a true first. But it was, you know, it was a limited promotional comic. And over the history of comics, that really hasn't been recognized as a first appearance. So I think that this book, Power Rangers number one from Hamilton Comics, is really the book to grab. And we just talked about with Transformers where this kind of like Hasbro cinematic universe is going for the same reason I'm bullish about this property. Plus Boom Studios is absolutely killing it with the publication of the comic. Nickelodeon is doing a lot with the television series and Nickelodeon has that new deal with Netflix. So we're only going to see more Power Ranger stuff on Netflix. And we talked about how we feel about Netflix properties. We are just about halfway through the list. And this next one we're going to talk about is a book I think I want to say it's overlooked, but a lot of people aren't looking for it. I'm talking about that Superman vs. Spider-Man number one. I think a lot of people might be put off because it's that treasury size edition. But either way, classic storyline. I think a lot of new people coming into comics might not even be aware of it. Right. Yeah, a lot of people I don't think are aware of it, Brian. And, you know, I remember what, like a little, just a few months ago, when we were talking about some of the talks surrounding Donny Cates' Thor number two, as well as when the coronavirus shutdown happened and there was really a lot of talk about Marvel and DC wanting to get together on the same page. Some of the teases that are out there that we could see a crossover coming in the coming years. And what happened on the secondary market really caught my eye. A lot of those crossover books, specifically that DC versus Marvel crossover, the, the, the mini series crossover, as well as that uh, X-Men Teen Titans book, they spiked immediately. But I feel like everybody was buying the wrong books because this is the first appearance 
of Marvel and DC crossing over together doing a joint book like this. And it came out well before that crossover that really kind of has been well publicized from the early 90s. So I think if you kind of, if this ends up happening, right, and I think that more and more we see evidence that it, it, it's a real possibility that they could, at least on the publishing side, get together and work together again. I think that this could be a major, major investment. But why I like it is also because I like investments where I also have the sure thing of the fact that this is a classic book, iconic cover art imagery. It's, it's a piece of history because of the fact that it's this crossover and the first time they did it. Uh, they did it again a year later. And this is kind of that treasury size crossover where you also got Superman and Muhammad Ali. So there's great history with these books. These treasury books, while overlooked, like you mentioned, Brian, still tend to get considered first appearances. So it's one to pay attention to and one that you never know could be the next big major key. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just put off because of that treasury size. So it's like, how do you, you know, store it, collect it, just different than what your normal size books are. So I think that's why a lot of people just pass over it. Then coming in right at our number five spot, we got that first appearance of Thrawn in Star Wars Heir to the Empire number one. This is back to the Dark Horse books that a lot of people weren't like taking into consideration when Disney bought Star Wars and they were considering Dark Horse was no longer canon. But we're kind of seeing the mistake in that because now a lot of these characters are showing up, right? Yeah, they're, they're showing up not only in brand new Marvel series where maybe, yeah, they're trying to ignore the Dark Horse history on the publishing side. But it doesn't matter because we're seeing these characters start to show up in live action form. And that is exciting, the buying community. And the buying community doesn't really care what Marvel Publishing considers canon or not. They want the first time he appeared in a comic book. And it's not like we're talking about some jabroni comic book company. We're talking about Dark Horse Comics, who's a, a legit name in the comics industry and has been for a number of years. But this book, I think, is undervalued, especially when you start to look at some of the other major uh, Star Wars Dark Horse keys. And then when you start to think about this character, and the more you know about this character and kind of his appeal and how well his uh, miniseries from Marvel did and the attention that that got, it really makes me believe that this book is kind of being overlooked. So it, this is one of those things where we really put this in that 80s to 90s trend. I know that Star Wars kicked off in the late 70s, but really eight, kids in the 80s and 90s, they just grew up living that Star Wars life. So far before everybody was grabbing these Star Wars keys. Brian and I were talking about it. We made some top 10 lists, top five lists. We were talking about how these books were getting overlooked and now we're at a point where we're seeing it. So we've got to start making some moves on them. So this isn't a book I would say you want to sleep on too long, rather a book you may want to grab now because you can grab it every now and again for $20, $25. Then coming in just outside the top three this week, we have Batman number 428. There's another book we've talked about on this channel before, but I always love talking about it. Glad to see it on this list at the number four spot. If you're not aware, this is that death of Robin, Jason Todd. Brutal death at that, right? Right, and yeah, this is a book that a lot of your like speculation channels, they're not going to talk about, right? Because it's not a first appearance. It's not some you know, flashy new variant, right? It, but we talk about it because one of the trends that we highlight in our brand new ebook is, you know, classic is classic. That this, That's a benchmark in pop culture. It is. It, we, you and I, we're at an age where we remember. The 900 this, numbers. Right, this book's impact on us and our collecting in the early days. And because of that, it, it's always going to feel some sort of way to us. And then as the next generation of comic collectors come in, it's one that then get, that story gets passed on and you realize it's important. So if you, these younger collectors who love Red Hood, they're all in for Red Hood. You can't love Red Hood without understanding Red Hood. This is also one of those moments to me that defines the modern Joker. And you know, it, I feel like we've seen where Joker's popularity is. So you know, this is a book where I think it's getting overlooked. And not only is it a book that's getting overlooked, it's a type of book that's getting overlooked. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, Simpleman's Comics family, this is the type of book you're going to see Brian and I talking about more and more on the channel because this is a, there's an entire market of books that were at our absolute all-time classics that are being summarily overlooked for the new flashy modern thing. Yeah, and also there was just an article to, what, today or recently on Screen Rant where the actor Jason Todd in the Titan series 
hopes this storyline plays out in the show. And as you were saying off air, Jack, you just hope the show's still around, right? Yes, yes. I enjoy that show. The DC Universe app, I don't feel like it's long for the world. I'm really hoping HBO Max saves that show. Then coming in at the number three spot, we get another classic going with the trend of this week's list. And we're talking about G.I. Joe number one. Again, we're not talking about IDW, right? We're talking about Marvel. Right, because we got talking about that first appearance of Snake Eyes. We're talking about that first appearance of Cobra Commander. We're talking about that first appearance of the Baroness. Those three characters are as central to what G.I. Joe is as a property as anything. You're getting the main villain. You're getting the coolest character. And you're getting the female character that has been kind of the inspiration to so many iconic variant covers. And really, the Baroness, I think, has the most long-term potential for the future film franchise. I think she's more dynamic of a character than Cobra Commander. So this book, on top of that, forget about the first appearances. It's that 80s and 90s nostalgia. It's the same thing we've talked about with Masters of the Universe, number one, with Transformers, number one. We know where this Hasbro universe is going. We know this is all going to tie together. But even if we didn't have any of those movies to fall back on, these kids who grew up with these properties, they're coming into buying power. They, they look at G.I. Joe with the same nostalgia feel I do, the same nostalgia feel you do, Brian. And because of that, this book is becoming more and more important. Yeah, I mean, you can just look at the cover of the, every time you look at the cover, or every time I look at the cover, I'll say, you almost just see it almost come to life with the cartoon because it's so embrained. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so imprinted in your brain that it's like, <laughs> you just want to yell, go, Joe. And like you said, it. YouTube is showing episodes of it right now. And like I said before, that, that Tubi app, T-U-B-I, free. And there's a bunch of old 80s cartoons on there. I've been indoctrinating my kids with them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Then coming in the next to top spot at number two, we're talking about Batman Beyond number one. This is a lot of book. This is a book that you'll hear people talk about. And then you don't hear people talk about it, but it always floats around but it's a great one to have in your collection. Yeah, see, now this book is another one where it's sitting at a price where maybe it looks like a tough investment at $100, right? But we've already seen a trend in the last year of this book doubling in price or more. Right when the, that Batwoman Beyond storyline kind of came into focus around, uh, what was it, like issue 40 or issue 30 38 or Yeah, 37. Uh, something like that. We're going to get killed in the comment section for not remembering what that is. But you know where I stand with that character long term. But, you know, th ever since that kind of came out, the whole kind of Batman Beyond property has gotten more attention. We were actually joking at that point. Why would you pay $40 for that when you can buy the first appearance for around the same price? Now you're looking at $100. We haven't gotten a Batman Beyond film. We know that we can. Uh, we know that we... <clears throat> We haven't gotten a Batman Beyond film. We know that many people within Hollywood have mentioned that they would love to take part in that. And many uh, fans want Michael Keaton in it. Yes, yes. And Michael Keaton seems to be the absolute perfect person to play the aging Bruce Wayne. Um, we also know even Ben Affleck mentioned that that was something that he would be interested in um, if he was to return to Batman, played me more of a a mentorship role as as Bruce Wayne so you know this is a character that I think eventually we're going to see it's, it really reminds me of like a Miles Morales it's that next generation um, of a iconic character so a hundred dollars may seem like a lot man but you know look where Ultimate Fallout 4 is right now right and you can't buy Batman's first appearance you know you're not going to see that on the list that's not affordable to the average person so this is one of those things where I say this book and Damian Wayne's first appearance. If you want to get involved in the Batman family, that's probably your two best bets. Then coming in at our number one spot, a lot of people might look at the other books we've had on this list this week and say, well, this one doesn't deserve to be number one compared to those. But we would disagree with you because this is a classic book. This is a book that I also think a lot of people don't talk about. We're talking about that Star Wars number 41. And why is that? Well, it's the first appearance of Yoda. And I really feel like if you're talking about most important and iconic Star Wars characters, right? You're really talking about, especially you see this within merchandise, even within like your local Walmart. If you're, ta you're talking about Han, you're talking about Luke, you're talking about Leia. 
and you're talking about Yoda and Darth Vader. Those are kind of like the first five you see before you then get into Chewbacca and the droids. Um, and as kind of a major player, this book gets overlooked because it's so far down into the run of this, of this series being issue number 41. So it doesn't command anything like issue one or two do. Um, and I've very rarely seen it talked about. And it's a book that I've been bringing up for a number of years because I've always never understood why this book as well as like Lando Calrissian's first appearance, why are books that like these and kind of like the middle of the run getting overlooked? But what this really struck home to me, Brian, as something that I think it's at just no moss. We can't sit there and ignore this book any longer was when the child debuted on the Mandalorian and the oh, absolute popularity of this character. And we still don't know anything about it. We still don't know if this is Yoda reincarnated. We still don't know if that is Yoda's baby. That's why, I, that's why everybody says baby Yoda. We still don't know if that is some other uh, non-related character. We don't know anything about this character, but we've seen the popularity of baby Yoda. If baby Yoda wasn't, say, Yoda reincarnated, right? Everybody has talked about how the first appearance of baby Yoda is going to be like the biggest thing ever, but it, it may already exist. Um, and so it's one of those things where I just feel like this is a classic and iconic book. Maybe not a uh, $1,000 book, but you'll be stunned finding this book regularly for $3 and under. Uh, it's a book that I find all the time in bins where they're literally just putting the common Star Wars books. It's not usually deemed a first appearance. So it's sitting number one on our list, not because it's the most expensive book or even the greatest book, but it's one of the books that I feel like has the best opportunity for ROI. I think it's one that also for you PC collectors, you may not have in your PC and you may not have realized you don't have Yoda's first appearance. And as these Star Wars books take off, I think you need it. Well, yeah, you mentioned like this book could be hidden in bins or, or with some of the common ones. And then you also hear a lot of people say, hey, well, during that time period, there's so many copies printed. But also, just like you said with that argument, where a lot of these are in like flea markets or in those convention bins that are hidden with the, I say commons, I'm thinking of like trading cards. But not only are they done with that, but a lot of times they might not be bagged and boarded. They might not be boarded. A lot of times you'll see them just in, in the bag. So finding them in a good grade is even harder. Yeah, and this is a book that I actually find a lot of times that when you're going through this run, everybody pulled out that 42, that first Boba Fett, and they, that 41 is sitting right there, right in front of Boba Fett, and people are just overlooking it. So it's one to be on the lookout for, and it's again, it's why we wanted to do this show. It's why we wanted to create these lists on simplemanscomics.com, and it's also why we created this ebook with a hundred great back issues for you to be on the lookout for, as well as our insights on trends on buying habits, and on some things to avoid and watch out for. And we wanted to give you, Simple Mints Comics family, YouTube comic community, a kind of glimpse into what we're looking at when we're looking to buy on the back issue market. I hope this show has been of service. And I know that if you check out this ebook, again, for under $2 on SimpleMintsComics.com, it will absolutely be a tool for you and help you add to your comic collection. Yeah, so again, that's over there at simplemanscomics.com. That's one of the reasons why each week we kept saying this list, yes, although it's a top 10, it builds on itself. And rather than have to go back and look at each one of those top 10s, it's all consolidated one place, over 100 back issues for you to look at. Plus, like he said, has our commentary, some of our buying, collecting strategies that we like to use. And again, it's $1.95, under $2, up there at simplemanscomics.com. So that's the first 10 of these top 10, but they're still going to keep going. More volumes of those ebooks are going to be out as well. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Simplemans Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. I get to it first, I got you back. I guess I when I get to it last. Get it down, never going back. Get it down, never going back. I get to it first, I got you back. I guess I when I get to it last. Get it down, never going back.